Hello and welcome to CSI's presentation of Genetech Security Center 5.9 Features and Functions. My name is Emily Schenkel and I am an account manager with CSI. I'll be taking you through the PowerPoint today. Thank you very much for your time and attention. There are three main themes of the Security Center 5.9 release. Empowering system administrators, expanding video surveillance scale and security, and strengthening security and operation unification. I'm gonna take you through the PowerPoint presentation today and cover each of the themes and the details regarding those themes. So first up is empowering system administrators and how does Security Center 5.9 help empower administrators? It introduces new tools and lifecycle management options to simplify system management. There's a long-term support release track, custom package builder, holistic access control view, and mobile device management system certification. Access control monitoring enhancements. The first one is controllers and interfaces firmware tracking. Basically, that allows you to view current and latest firmware in a hardware inventory report. It's going to display the type of in update. Is it recommended features and bug fix or critical contains security features and fixes? Next up is controllers and interfaces health monitoring. This will allow you to view if a device is online or offline and trigger an action if needed. Events are listed on the events report and the access control health history report. The inventory hardware report indicates firmware versions and recommended upgrades. Additional door events there is a new door secured event and it validates that the door is both locked and secured. A new lock state unsecured is visible from the door widget, maps, and system status doors report. New events are displayed in the monitoring task. Genetech Mobile MDM certification. The Genetech Mobile has been tested to validate support with leading mobile device management platforms, MDM platforms. They're tested for Workspace ONE, formerly AirWatch, by VMware and Microsoft Intune. And this is available for iOS and Android devices. The uh, Genetech Mobile MDM certification first assigned Genetech Mobile to enrolled devices. You can then manage your updates. So as you can see, you can add assignments, change the delivery method. It also includes push settings. The next theme, scaling and protecting video surveillance. Security Center 5.9 combined with the latest generation of Stream Vault helps you protect and scale your system with ease. There's new layers of protection to ensure the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of video exchanged and stored in the system. The evolution of hardware and video streaming technologies gets you more streams for your money. And the Stream Vault turnkey appliances evolve at the same pace, now offering machine learning endpoint protection by default and validated workstations with the latest generation of processors. This will help you get the most out of the latest video streaming technologies. Digital signature. This validates the integrity of all video exports using a simplified procedure. This is activated by default on new Stream Vault images, and it now uses a more secure elliptic curve signature algorithm. So what does that mean? Basically, the digital signature capability in Security Center 5.9 has been improved. This was named watermarking in previous versions. However, digital signature is a more common term in the industry. In a nutshell, digital signature is a video authentication feature that validates the integrity of all exported video with a simple procedure. All you have to do is activate digital signature in the advanced settings as seen in the screenshot. It will be activated by default on new Stream Vault images. This is also useful for archive or file integrity validation in case of disk corruption. In terms of improvement, we're replacing the previous previous RSA algorithm with EDDSA, which is a more secure elliptic curve signature algorithm. The new algorithm does require more processing power than the previous version. 
A 6% CPU increase can be expected per 3000 FPS watermarked by the archiver. So 100 cameras at 30 frames per second, that is on a Genentech recommended server. For example, if your current archiver with RSA runs at 22% with 300 cameras at 30 frames per second, it will increase to 26%. So watermarking, add identification watermarking to live and recorded video. The main objective is to deter operators from sharing exported or screen captured video in an unauthorized fashion. So this was initially built for an airport and this feature is a deterrent to prevent users from leaking exported files to YouTube or filming the screen and sharing it. Identification watermarking are displayed in live and export videos. You can add the username, workstation name, and or camera name over every video tile. Exports are now always transcoded to burn the overlay in the video, making the removal extremely difficult. It is not metadata, it is hard burned. Supports all video formats. If use was exporting to G64, it is going to make the file export much longer because it will require transcoding. So that is something to take into consideration. Your exports when you're using this are going to take a little bit longer. As you can see, for example, 10 seconds to even eight minutes, depending on exactly what you're exporting. And you can see some of the screenshots associated with this. So this can be applied on a per user basis, can be inherited from a user group for all live and recorded video feeds. This is only available for local users, not federated. This can be activated in the user management task and you can enable video watermarking and start configuration. Um, so as mentioned, some exports may now need to be transcoded and will take longer. Media router enhancements. Genetech has added IPv6 multicast support on the RTSP in the Security Center Media Gateway. So the context of this is progressively uh, end users start to watch, to use IPv6 in the field. We've reached the limits of av available IPv4 addresses. So the solution was to implement IPv6 in the Media Gateway RTSP interface. So will allow a web page to stream the video from the interface in IPv6. This allows Security Center to be more compliant with modern deployment where the end users focus their deployment in IPv6. You can see the screenshots associated with that. So streaming has just gotten a whole lot more efficient. And that is good news. Um, that was done by improved decoding performance of H.265. So let's see a quick graph with the most common codecs used across the industry, H.264 and the newer H.265. H.265 has now reached an efficiency level that is the same or even better than H.264 from its coding standpoint, while reducing storage need of typically more than 20%. That means the VMS will handle smaller video files with H.265 for the same video quality, and processing required for decoding are now roughly the same across most common resolutions. As a reminder, H.265 supports higher resolution, so if you want to use new and upcoming 30 megapixel cameras, for instance. Genetech did some testing to illustrate that point. Recent tests show that H.265 is now as efficient as H.264, thanks to the latest generation of CPUs. Decoding performance for H.265 has been improved over the past years. With new generations of CPUs, it goes even further. We've reached a point where H.265 is faster than H.264, and there's a reason for that. The higher the number of cores and frequency, the better the decoding. Up to one, 0.6 times more decoded UHD tiles with 14 cores CPU. So let's compare a mid-range and a high-end workstation and see how many streams each of them can be decode. A mid-range, this type of processor with a single graphics 
graphics card is typically found in our Streamvault SVW300E workstations product line, 14 cores, 28 threads. High end, the Intel i9 processor has more than double the amount of cores and two graphic cards. This would be a Streamvault SVW500E workstation with six cores and 12 threads. We consider the CPU maxed at approximately 85%, big maximum 90%. And the last theme was strengthening security and operation unification. So we want to assess events and coordinate response more efficiently with updated communications and intrusion models, modules. Unified public address system communications, individual camera assignment to intrusion sensors, and a new intrusion overview panel. With the Sepelia public address Dressing, Sepelia 2.9 introduces custom paging groups containing any type of SIP devices. When activated a group, each device is called and transmits the same message simultaneously. Live and recorded messages can be sent to paging groups. So you can see the paging group displayed in the address book. You select the message to play. Timeout can be overridden by operator if needed. There is also an improved intrusion overview of intrusion situation. So you can now see all intrusion information from any task and you can associate cameras to intrusion output inputs. So there's a new intrusion icon shield in the alerts tray that lets you know when any intrusion entities fall into non-normal states. For example, an alarm, trouble, power failure, bypass, you can pin the overview pane, which will remain no matter what task you are using, giving you eyes on all potential intrusion threats no matter where you are or what you're working on. You can also now associate cameras to particular intrusion inputs. This allows you to see the camera relevant to the device that triggered an alarm rather than the entire zone that is in an alarm. All in all, this lets operators work more efficiently while monitoring intrusion as well as rapidly identify and investigate any issues. Some other notable enhancements, monitoring widgets. You can specialize your widgets, customize your dashboard with new alarm widgets, including an alarm count and an alarm list. There's also an alarm queue by newest, so you can display newest alarms on top of alarm list instead of oldest. Alarm count tracking, live count of active alarms and incidents on maps, replaces flashing visual queue to provide more information at a glance. And that's available for desktop maps only. So you can see the monitoring widgets, the alarm queue ordering, with the newer on top, and the active alarm count clustering. And that ends our presentation. Thank you very much for your time. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you so much.